Good afternoon and welcome back to events. We will now host Clara Audry. Clara is a partner at the venture capital fund Caporn. She is also the vice president at France Digital, an organization that focuses on fostering relationships between entrepreneurs and investors. Before that, she was the vice president at One Fine Stay, where she launched the French side of the business and managed European growth and, ex and expansion. Uh, this company then sold $170 million to Aqua Hotel in 2016. Clara will give us some insights into her experience and into the venture capital part of the equation. As always, do not hesitate to ask any questions you might have in the comments feed, and we will take some time at the end to answer them. To answer them. Uh, Clara, up to you. Hello everyone, thank you Vinciane. I'm very, very happy to be here uh, today with you, uh, well, almost with you. Um, when uh, I was asked to, to speak about women, uh, tech and VC, of course I couldn't say no, and uh, we unfortunately won't be able to share coffee or drink, but let's make this session uh, memorable anyway. First, a few words about myself. Um, as you said, I'm 33. I'm married to a, a wonderful husband, and I have, I have uh, two uh, children, uh, Charlotte and Ernest. I'm also a partner at Caporn, indeed, uh, a VC investing in B2B startups um, at the early stage. Uh, we would typically invest in startups uh, raising their Series A, so quite the, the first institutional uh, round. Um, we, the startups would have a, a team, a product, the beginning of a go-to-market strategy, uh, and we come to speed grow, to speed grow up, and uh, we participate to equity rounds to support new recruitment, R&D, marketing investments, uh, opening of offices uh, around the world. So this is it. Uh, this is me, and we, we can um, I can ask a question, of course, uh, afterwards. Uh, but but first, maybe what what the job? Uh, I'm sure you are pretty uh, familiar with with venture capital. But let's get it started, and uh, maybe give you a, a small favor of my uh, typical day. Uh, first, well, there are no uh, such things are, are, are typical, as a typical um, day in VC. As a partner, I'm in charge of uh, originating new opportunities, analyzing whether there are stories we would like to invest in, uh, then executing the deals, following up the, comp the portfolio companies uh, as, a, as a board member. So I, I like to see myself, uh, my, my work as doing everything I, I possibly can to support the portfolio companies and help entrepreneurs uh, to save time and win, uh, win the race. Uh, sometimes I'm a recruiter, sometimes I'm a beta tester, sometimes I'm a personal mentor, uh, so it, it depends on the days. Uh, we can um, uh, uh, elaborate more but, um, uh, and on, on, on the different aspects of, of a, a venture capital uh, uh, job, but there are many different uh, areas of expertise um, from um, legal aspects to finance, strategy, entrepreneurship. So it's a passionate uh, job I, I would encourage you uh, uh, to, to, to take on. Um, and um, now today is a, is a special day. We are here to, to speak about gender balance, gender equality. So what about uh, gender balance in VC? Uh, the, 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 the first, uh, there was a, a, a first barometer made by a sister in BCG uh, in, in 2019, maybe you talked about it this morning uh, because I know some people uh, from SISTA uh, talked. Uh, and it stated that women um, have basically 30% less chance to raise funds. And, uh, and unfortunately, it's getting worse and worse as company scales and uh, getting to their Series B and C, so ba basically getting bigger and uh, trying to go uh, uh, to IPO or um, another exit scenario. And so um, while, um, and this is surprising because this survey also showed that startups funded or co-funded by women have on average a, a return which is 2.5x higher than their peers. So it means it has to change and, um, and it shouldn't be uh, this way. So even if I think things are moving, numbers are, are still still show a, a gender gap that needs to be filled and you uh, um, HSC students and alumni need to change that you need to get uh, started on and launch 
new adventures. Otherwise, uh, we will achieve parity in 2090 in France, uh, which will be, will be good for our grandchildren, but uh, uh, a bit far away, uh, in my opinion. Um, However, I'm, I'm very confident that you won't let this happen, and we see more and more uh, uh, mixed and female um, team uh, um, getting started. Uh, but still, in France, we have only 5% of women founders. So 5% is not a lot, and I believe it's like 10% for mixed um, launching team. Parity in terms of VC is getting better. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised that today we are in the 50-50 situation ratio at entry level. So if you want to get into venture capital, basically getting out of college, um, you should have a good, uh, a good chance. Um, however, um, it, it's a different story um, today when it comes to the partners level. And so I think uh, the numbers is 14%, uh, one four, uh, in terms of uh, women um, getting, getting to the partner level. Um, uh, to be honest, it's getting better and, and um, a lot has changed and uh, venture capital is, I think, uh, a good place to be. Um, private equity, as you may know, encompass venture capital, but also uh, like growth capital and later stage uh, investments, LBU and so forth. Uh, on this side, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it, it's a much more traditional kind of um, work environment and uh, unfortunately I think numbers are still low but in venture capital uh, much much better so uh, pick your place uh, be aware of sometimes um, a, a funny situation and uh, hopefully not gender discrimination and uh, ignore ignore it when it comes and just uh, move on that would be uh, that would be um, a small tip uh, from my end, um, um, and well, then I, I wanted to, to share with you uh, uh, um, the secret recipe to get into venture capital. Well, um, I first, uh, as women, um, just dare to do it. Don't be afraid to be uh, sometimes the only woman uh, in the room um, and uh, ignore the comments. A younger, to give you a, a small, uh, um, a funny fact, younger, I was often uh, named uh, the, assist, the assistant or even uh, the IT person uh, when in a meeting, uh, much less often uh, uh, an investment analyst or an investment director. But I, I often answered with a smile, ignoring, um, which was, of course, only uh, an information misalignment. Um, the second thing I would say is there is no direct path to VC as a woman or as a man. Uh, just follow yours. Um, I learned customer relation as a flight attendant uh, during my first summer internship. Uh, then I chose um, a finance and a strategy major, got into private equity when out of college. I became an operator in a, in a scale up before becoming a VC. So you can always uh, rationalize uh, ex post uh, on your experiences, but the truth is uh, life is like a, a chocolate box and uh, full of uh, surprises. Uh, in Maybe to get into more practical um, uh, tips or information, I would like to speak about internships. Uh, while you are uh, at school, it's a good if you know that you want to become a, to become a, a venture capital. Um, three things that could help. The first would be um, to, to work for six months or so in a startup, to do the same in a scale-up. This way you learn what the different teams are in a, in, in a tech company. Uh, you learn what's uh, to be on the, on the ground floor and to be uh, 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 selling, for example. The second uh, internship that can be helpful uh, to get into VC would be M&A or a uh, consult consulting firm. This is the traditional path to uh, going into private equity more broadly. And finally, the last piece would be to uh, try to get into a VC fund as an intern, because it will help you either be recruited by this fund if uh, they need someone, or uh, be recommended by, uh, by the team uh, to work in, a, in another VC fund. So it's a pretty, um, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty small world. So uh, if you can get one foot in, it's, it's much better. Um, and um, 
another thing I would say is when um, one day you are a VC, um, well, keep in mind to be an ambassador anytime you can, anytime you can, because um, uh, gender diversity is gold, and more balanced board and executive teams will be more successful. So you get um, a diverse point of view um, and uh, people tempering stress when it, when uh, there are some. Uh, so um, if you um, succeed, if you are a founder, if you are a VC investor, well then um, it's it's good to spread the the, the word out um, and. Um, uh, the uh, the other thing I would say is speak up because um, sometimes when uh, we we have a tendency to not to speak when we don't know uh, well if you have half of the answer uh, others will jump in um, uh, and uh, with only a, a vague idea and 10% of the solution so I would say also uh, to speak up because this is something um, that you need to have being a VC or being a founder you need to make fast decision making. Um, or important decision making, and um, you need to be uh, confident and um, very, uh, yeah, uh, uh, bold, as I would say. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, I think I think that's uh, a good uh, a good starting point. I, I, I um, as far as I'm concerned, I didn't I did not experience what we call sometimes a glass ceiling. Uh, I've been fortunate to have uh, colleagues partners and mentors um, who have uh, embraced, uh, I would say, um, my uh, uh, my experiences and, and also my motherhood uh, with flexibility and joy and um, basically my absence when I had uh, a couple uh, were a non-issue and um, as you know, um, uh, any company can survive uh, uh, a couple of months or uh, 12 weeks uh, without someone, so it's not because um, you have uh, uh, a family that it has to change, you don't have to choose, that's my opinion at least. Um, one thing is, uh, um, I have a partner in life who understands my uh, my passion and um, for my work and who contributes to uh, the day-to-day -day task, it, it can mean, uh, and maybe uh, you will, uh, you will uh, find it um, I would say a small thing, but it is huge if you don't have someone to share things uh, of, the, of, of your uh, family uh, with, even if he also has a demanding job, well, splitting the role is very, uh, is, uh, is something very important. And uh, all that I'm speaking about uh, is, um, uh, it's, it shouldn't be an opportunity, it should be normal, so I'm hoping that it will get normal. Personally, I, I deeply believe that um, uh, in, in the need to balance um, paternity and maternity leave even more, and it, it has uh, started in the, in the good way. I also believe in the benefit of uh, female uh, testimony, female figures who can testify um, uh, on, on uh, their uh, success, strengths, and experiences, more broadly, also failures. Um, I also believe in uh, school teachers um, who should uh, show their students that entrepreneurship uh, basically has nothing to do with gender and uh, also uh, down the road also believe in an education uh, that avoids uh, as much as possible the cognitive bias um, that uh, will have a major impact on the confidence um, that our children and the future adults will have in themselves and also the uh, which will give them the ability to uh, be an entrepreneur, uh, to be uh, also an investor. So this is uh, the, the different pillars. Um, uh, education uh, being uh, probably one of the of the more important. Um, so yes, uh, sky is the limit. Uh, sky is the limit. Uh, as I stated, it's getting better and much better in the, on the VC side. Um, the, the, the founder side is still getting better, but uh, I really, really encourage uh, you at school to have a co to find co-founders and have a, a very diversified team to get started um, and uh, to be uh, to be foolish and to enjoy what to do. So that that would be my uh, my my testimonial. I'm not sure exactly how I did it on, on time, but uh, I'm very happy to take uh, questions 
uh, from the audience that I don't see. So it's pretty uh, unique <laughs> to give a, a monologue speech like this. I'm, I'm hoping not to be too boring. Um, it was perfect. Thank you, Claire. Uh, we do have <laughs> quite a few questions uh, from the audience. Um, the first one uh, being related to the fact that you talked a bit about the fact that women-led teams uh, tend to raise less funds. And our first question is, uh, do you advise other VCs to set up quotas of investment in startups led by women? Huh. Uh, the, the question of quotas is very, very difficult. Um, I think that um, to get started and uh, in other things to, to move, you probably have to at least have an incentive to um, to uh, to invest uh, on mixed team or female team. We have more and more um, more and more investors basically sign um, uh, charts and uh, also take some um, engagement to be uh, much more um, open and to be much more uh, to encourage more uh, mixed team to come to that. But honestly, I would be in favor of an incentive because I think it, in order things to move fast, uh, we, need to, we need to completely uh, uh, change on perspective. The, the, the main issue I see today as an investor is that I don't see much female founders coming to me. To be honest, I try to uh, meet all of them because I have much less. Um, I don't have the numbers like fresh in my mind, but I think it's probably 10 to 15 percent uh, that uh, out of out of 10 uh, opportunities, I have one 1.5 coming from a, a mixed uh, team, especially because we invest in B2B. So um, it's it's uh, it's uh, uh, I mean it's uh, it's it may be less true in B2C um, conception kind of businesses. But uh, to answer your question, I think um, funds are more and more uh, incentivized and pushed to uh, have a, a more balanced, uh, more balanced portfolio. And we have uh, institutional investors. So uh, a VC fund would invest money that comes from institutional funds. And those uh, institutional funds want more money going into, uh, into mixed in. So uh, I think it's uh, getting better. And you don't have quotas, so to speak, but you have a, a strong incentive. And some funds are also getting very uh, specialized on the topic and uh, willing to only invest in women founders. So that's uh, also something we see uh, in the landscape. Uh, we have a question that relates uh, a bit to this one, which is, uh, would you advise women entrepreneurs to form mixed team uh, rather than all female teams uh, to increase the probability of fundraising? Oh, very, very good question. So um, first, um, as I said, I strongly believe entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship doesn't have uh, gender. So uh, I wouldn't say pick a, a co-founder because she's a woman or he's a guy. I would say pick the co-founder you, you need. Pick someone who is very complementary in terms of skill, experiences, mindset, ability to, to, to uh, work on, on, uh, in a stressful uh, environment. I wouldn't be. Um, I wouldn't say pick um, pick your partner only on gender on gender uh, on the gender gender uh, side. But um, it's true that uh, probably in in the in the, in the fundraising exercise, I mean numbers show that a mixed team uh, will have more chances. Uh, so. I mean, you don't have to do it for that, but um, it could be an asset to have a, a, and, and diversity. Uh, diversity is not only about gender, it's also about different work of life. So I would say get some diversity in the, in the launching team that will uh, definitely help. And 100% um, uh, 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 female funding team is also uh, great. Uh, so it, it really uh, it depends uh, more. I would think about uh, it more on the skills experiences uh, staff. I know that the uh, HSC works a lot with uh, engineer school and I deeply believe that the mix of a business profile and an engineer profile for instance is very rich. Um, someone uh, coming from the traditional uh, prepa kind of uh, uh, thing and also someone having um, different degrees from other university. So 
put a lot of diversity in, in the founding team, not necessarily only on gender base, uh, but numbers show that yes, uh, a mixed team would have more chance. Uh, nonetheless, I'm hoping that uh, it won't be any more subject in uh, 10 years from now. Thank you. Uh, you also have quite a few questions, uh, more on the VC side than on the entrepreneur side. Uh, the first one being, as a venture capitalist, how do you make sure uh, to reduce bias as much as possible when allocating funds? So, um, good question. So bias, uh, every, so first we, first we are a team of investors. So. Um, we have, each one of us would have uh, companies um, uh, to follow and would discuss with a lot of different opportunities. But then when we make decisions, we are uh, five partners and each of us have, uh, has uh, some sensibilities, some uh, uh, um, uh, different, I would say, um, way of looking at things. And this is making us much less uh, biased, I would say. So the, the first answer would be investment process and also the, the board, um, not the board, but the partners meeting configuration uh, would, uh, would uh, help. Um, also, we tend to push much more than uh, before into uh, some HR uh, topic very um, early uh, in stage and we would uh, ask founders very, uh, um, like to go very deep into why they are launching their business, into their vision. And so this way we are um, also um, uh, trying to, to remove uh, any and to have very different kind of uh, funding team. But the, the, main, the main answer to your question would be um, investment process so that everyone in the team can jump in and has, have a, a perspective. So having a, a, a fund where you have different people, it all comes to putting diversity uh, at all stages, uh, basically, to avoid uh, bias. Um, and you, you won't get rid of it um, uh, to, to, because you still have a, a DNA and a culture and some values in your team, in your investment team. But at least uh, you will get better if you have a former entrepreneur, a former uh, IT, like uh, someone from the tech in, um, in industry, for example, and someone uh, who was a, a VC all his life. So combining different experiences, um, setting your uh, partner's meeting right so that you have different um, uh, different type of people around the table, I'd say. Um, now a question uh, about uh, the career path and the possibilities of evolution uh, when joining a venture capital fund. Uh, so what is the career ladder uh, at a venture capital fund uh, and kind of with a timeline? Uh, how, how, how long uh, would it take to reach certain levels and, uh, um, and how do, what does it look like? So uh, um, uh, the, the, I, can, I can give you an idea and uh, the typical uh, journey in a VC fund. However, let me insist, insist one more time in saying that um, uh, you have some paths, but just go create yours because there are a lot of different situations. Uh, you would get uh, um, probably, so let's say you are get, uh, going into a, a VC fund at entry level, you, would, you will probably, uh, it would probably take, uh, I would say, uh, three to four years to uh, analyze a lot of deal, uh, see a lot of company, probably thousands, um, um, work with a partner on, uh, I would say, uh, uh, a couple of deals per year. So keep in mind that it's a long-term job because um, you invest, uh, you, you see like, uh, I, um, you receive thousands of opportunities, you dig, you, you meet with uh, hundreds of them and you uh, invest in dozens of them. So it's, um, it's a, a work when, uh, where you uh, see a lot of uh, uh, a lot of different uh, people, a lot of different um, uh, opportunities, and it takes time. So three, I would say three, uh, two to three years as an analyst. Then you can um, become what we call a, um, um, a principal. So making uh, it means that you have the ability to manage uh, a pipeline of deal on your own, and that. Uh, uh, with the help of a partner, you can help closing uh, closing a deal. Then, uh, after uh, becoming a principal, you have 
one stage. So it depends on the fund, on the size, but you can either become an investment director and then a partner uh, or uh, going uh, straight to the partner level. But it usually takes, I would say, um, um, three years on every step and you can uh, 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 become a partner. So depending if you, if you get a very early stage after your, 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 your degree, uh, early 30s or 35-ish. So this would be the career path, but again, uh, it depends. It depends. You can also become a partner much younger now because the the VC industry is very moving, is moving fast, and we we see um, some very uh, young um, uh, and talented individuals uh, becoming partners much uh, earlier. It depends if you uh, join. Um, a, a small and entrepreneurial team, or if you uh, join a, a very uh, established fir firm. So all this depends on on, uh, on what you will, uh, uh, which uh, company you will you will choose. Uh, but uh, I would say yes, uh, three steps: analyst, investment director, or principal, and then partner. Um, three years for each stage, uh, and you can go much faster if uh, you find um, first if you learn fast. If you uh, happen to uh, identify very good deals and uh, create a track record earlier on, then you can uh, move faster. Uh, and I'm sure there would be a lot of you, uh, as it's uh, a pretty a pretty good uh, good school you are in. So, um, another question, uh, Mar, about uh, the relationship with the entrepreneurs, and how do you build a feeling of legitimacy while talking to entrepreneurs uh, while they are risking everything? Uh, for this business uh, and your on, in an almost risk-free uh, position? Very good question. So first of all, um, it's, not really, it's not really, we, we can't say that we are in the risk-free position as an investor. Of course, we have a, direct, uh, a diversified portfolio, which means our life is not only one company. Uh, nevertheless, um, we are investing on behalf of institutional investors, and if we don't do a right, the, the good job, uh, we, we won't succeed to have a, a, a job within 10 years from, from now. So it's, it's longer to, to have the effect, but it's still a risky job that we are in. Um, so how do we get um, uh, to, to, get, um, to have the, the confidence? In my, so in my case, uh, I find that um, my uh, operational experiences, experience, so um, as you said, I, I um, uh, launched the, the French market for a UK startup um, in the hospitality sector. So I, I joined, uh, we were like just uh, two of us, and we, we recruited a team in Paris. So we, we went from zero to 50 people. Uh, in a very um, uh, in short in short period of time, um, and then we scaled. Um, I looked after the European market, and then I uh, was close to to the the, the exit uh, process. So so this gave me a lot of learning. It's like in 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 four years, I think I uh, it's as if I had done uh, two, two M MBAs, and this uh, give is giving me a lot of. Um, input and insight to speak with a founder because I can understand what it means to recruit someone when you don't have a brand to uh, sign you the first 100 uh, customers. Um, so I would be, try to build uh, what I do before becoming a, v a VC in order it has some, um, some impact. So it doesn't mean that you will have all the answers far from, from this and uh, every entrepreneur knows better the job, but it will mean that you will have the sense of what is entrepreneurship, how hard it is, and uh, you will have the empathy uh, to uh, uh, to understand the founder when um, uh, and it it can be it can go as early as when you are uh, um, welcoming uh, the team to uh, assess the opportunity. Your posture, your behavior will be different if you are only in a in a financial kind of uh, if you have been only in the financial kind of roles or if you had seen um, if, you, if you saw some different uh, things. So uh, trying to, as far as I'm concerned, I built uh, my experiences um, on the entrepreneurship, on the entrepreneur side, on the financial side, and this allowed me to, to, um, to speak right uh, to, to the entrepreneur. 
preneur, I think. The, uh, the, so the, the experiences that you have first, and the second thing is um, uh, getting to know a sector or a topic very well so that you are identified as a specialist. And um, depending on what you do before, so you, you will be able to say, well, I'm very much familiar to, uh, I don't know, average tech, HR tech, because I went to, to work with, uh, in this startup, I got to know the industry. So being good at basically what you know, it won't be enough to only read a couple of uh, surveys or uh, studies uh, before the meeting. Um, I think the specialty is quite uh, something that can make the difference also. Thank you so much for answering all these questions. Uh, unfortunately, this is the end of our time. So thank you for agreeing to be part of this event. And uh, we will thank meet you. again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, thank you for welcoming me. It was a pleasure. And uh, enjoy the end of, uh, of the afternoon for all these uh, um, uh, passionating uh, panels. And uh, uh, happy to answer any more uh, other questions uh, via email uh, if needed. Thank you so much. And uh, for all the rest of you, we'll meet you after a short break at 4 p.m. Uh, where we will talk with Claire Potier, uh, who will talk to us about her experience in the French Navy. Thank you and see you soon. <laughs>